my dear students welcome to easy btech your guide for btech and bn we are discussing about subject signals and systems and today's topic is problems on fourier transform very important session and also we are going to discuss fourier transform of periodic signal and before going to our discussion all of you subscribe share the channel so that it is very helpful to you so please subscribe share the channel let's start our session problems on fourier transform so very important problem we discuss now we are going to see fourier transform of triangular pulse fourier transform of triangular pulse so the problem is fourier transform of triangular pulse so i am drawing triangular pulse a triangular function this fourier transform we are going to do so let the signal is x of t x axis time axis and uh, the right side the pulse is up to tau and the left, left side the pulse is up to minus tau and the amplitude of the pulse is a the amplitude is a so total width of the pulse minus tau to plus tau how much it is 2 tau the pulse width uh, triangular pulse width is 2 tau so how to do fourier transform of this triangular pulse so now i am going to use property differentiation property so the hint is here differentiation property we are going to use normally also you can do normally by using the fourier transform formula also we can do but using this differentiation property solution is easy okay so now i am going to do differentiation of this triangular pulse that means d by dt of x of t so before differentiation so triangular pulse is a combination of two ramps one ramp is minus tau to zero another ramp is 0 to tau so i'm going to write the slope here this ramp is its slope is a by tau and this second ramp slope is minus a by tau negative slope so how to write the slope y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 simple so take two points we can get the slope so now i'm going to differentiate it d by dt of x of t okay so a ramp here minus tau to zero we have ramp so what is the differentiation of ramp what is the differentiation of ramp we know that we know that u of t is equal to d by dt of r of t right if you differentiate the ramp we get the u of t suppose the ramp slope is a so we get the step amplitude a that is a point here whatever the slope of the ramp we get step amplitude here the ramp slope is a so amplitude of this step is a u of t means step function its amplitude is a why amplitude is a because slope of the ramp is a so here minus tau to zero we have ramp so its slope is a by tau therefore we get minus tau to zero we get a step function its amplitude is how much amplitude a by tau slope of this step is amplitude after differentiation and similarly 0 to tau so here this is minus tau to 0 minus tau to 0 now 0 to tau we have ramp again its slope is minus a by tau therefore 0 to tau also we get the negative step because negative slope therefore negative negative step so i am taking negative step 0 to tau 0 to tau plus tau 
so very simple so negative step its amplitude is how much the slope of the ramp what is the slope here minus a by tau so its amplitude is minus a by tau minus a by tau so this is zero this is tau so this is the first differentiation of x of t right so i am going to differentiate once again this is the first differentiation of x of t we are going to differentiate once again so here i am taking discontinuities this is the discontinuity and a by tau to minus a by tau one more discontinuity and minus a by tau to zero is the discontinuity so now again differentiation of it d square dt square of x of t so here we have step now differentiation of step we know that we know that d by dt of u of t is equal to impulse del of t impulse del of t right or not so here we have three discontinuities one discontinuity minus tau to a by tau another discontinuity a by tau to minus a by tau and third one minus a by tau to zero so if you do differentiation we get three impulses three impulses wherever we have discontinuity arrows i have shown that indicates discontinuity so i am plotting it now d square dt square x of t i am going to plot so at minus tau we have impulse and at zero also we have impulse okay we have impulse at tau also we have impulse so this is the result we get so this is at tau this is at zero and it is at minus tau so the amplitude of or the strength of impulse at minus tau a by tau so impulse is always specified by its strength or area so a by tau at minus tau and at zero so we have discontinuity a by tau to minus a by tau means minus 2a by tau the strength is minus 2a by tau at plus tau minus a by tau to zero so this is a by tau right so this is the signal after double differentiation now i am going to apply for a transform so that i can get the result easily right or not so first we have what we have done so we have done first differentiation of the given triangular function we got the steps function right or not ramp function differentiation is step function again step function differentiation we have done we get impulse right now i am going to apply fourier transform so fourier transform of d square dt square of x of t x of t is the given function is equal to so we have impulses i am writing that impulses a by tau where we have impulse at a minus tau so del of t plus tau this is a fourier transform of first one and minus 2a by tau we have impulse at zero that means del of t and plus a by tau we have impulse that is at plus tau means right side that is t minus tau so this is a way of writing impulses as per uh, their location we are writing their location and their strengths we are writing so now already we know apply uh, differentiation property time differentiation property what is the time differentiation property saying which property time differentiation property 
x of t Fourier transform is x of omega. Now dy dt of x of t Fourier transform, it will become j omega into x of omega. So here we have d square dt square second time derivative. So d square dt square Fourier transform will become what it will become j omega whole square x of omega. And already we know the Fourier transform of impulse function. Here we have time shifting also there t plus tau t minus tau. So and we know the Fourier transform of del of t is 1. Fourier transform of del of t is 1. Suppose Fourier transform of del of t plus or minus t naught time shifting. What is answer? 1 into e to the power j plus or minus omega t naught. So exponential term will come. If plus t naught, here also plus e power plus j omega t naught. Minus t naught, e power minus j omega t naught. So all these we are going to use now. All these we are going to use. This is time shift property. And this is time differentiation property. So properties are very very helpful to do Fourier transform easily. So now the LHS d square dt square x of t, its Fourier transform will become what it Fourier transform j omega square x of omega j omega square x of omega is equal to here a by tau del of t plus tau. So here come to that time shifting property. So a by tau del of t plus tau e to the power plus j omega tau right minus 2a by tau minus 2a by tau here del of t del of t for a transform is 1 so minus 2a by tau plus a by tau del of t minus tau so a by tau e to the power minus j omega tau minus j omega tau right now <coughs> we are going to do a simplification so here we have e power j omega tau e power minus j omega tau a by tau a by tau we can have common we can take common a by tau is common then e to the power j omega tau plus e to the power minus j omega tau minus 2a by tau minus 2a by tau okay and here we have left side we have j omega square j square will become minus 1 and omega square so it will be minus omega square into x of omega minus omega square into x of omega and this minus sign we can send right side it will become 2a by tau minus a by tau e power j omega tau plus e to the power minus j omega tau that's all so if you look this uh, bracket e power j theta plus e power minus j theta so we require by 2 into 2 because to write in cos function okay what is cos theta e power j theta plus e power minus j theta by 2. So in the same manner I am going to write in cos function. So 2a by tau, 2a by tau we can take common. So omega square x of omega is equal to 2a by tau is common then 1 minus cos theta. So what is theta here? Omega tau right 1 minus cos theta that is omega tau so in trigonometric we have 1 minus cos theta 1 plus cos theta so 1 minus cos theta we can write as 1 minus cos theta we can write as 2 sin square theta by 2 2 sin square theta by 2 
right so this i'm going to use again so 2a by tau so 1 minus cos theta is 2 sin square theta by 2 so 2 sin square 2 sin square theta by 2 that means omega tau by 2 2 sin square omega tau by 2 okay then send this omega square right side that will become our answer nothing else so in the next step so whatever we have i am writing again omega square into x of omega is equal to so 4a by what we have 4a by tau so 4a by tau sin square omega tau by 2 sin square omega tau by 2 now x of omega we want x of omega Fourier transform of triangular function 4a by tau into sin square omega tau by 2 divided by omega square so this is the result for example so this is a given function for a transform for example our triangular pulse is so this is the given triangular pulse minus tau to plus tau it is minus tau to plus tau amplitude is a for example if tau is equal to 1 tau is equal to 1 minus 1 to 1 so total width of the rectangular pulse is how much width 2 and amplitude i am taking 1 so by these values what will be the Fourier transform with these values what is the x of omega so x of omega is equal to a is equal to 1 therefore 4 a means 4 into 1 and what is our tau here what is the tau here? 1. So 4 by 1. Sin square. Sin square. Omega. Tau. Tau is equal to how much? 1. So 1 by 2. Omega square by 2 divided by omega square. So this is the answer. 4 sin square omega by 2 by omega square. Right? So very very important triangular function or triangular signal Fourier transform. Using time differentiation property we can do it easily. Now go to another problem. Fourier transform of another problem. Periodic signal. Very very important. Fourier transform of periodic signal. periodic signal so already we know we know Fourier series of periodic signals so similarly Fourier transform we can do for periodic signals also so how to do let's see now so we know Fourier series of periodic signal exponential Fourier series I am taking Fourier series exponential Fourier series of periodic signal periodic signal first we are taking periodic signal x t of t x t of t with the period capital D with period capital T so can be expressed or written as so how to write the exponential Fourier series of periodic signal x t of t with period capital T so how to write so the periodic signal x t of t is equal to summation n is minus infinite to plus infinite Fourier series coefficients so Cn into e to the power 
J n omega naught t. So this is the exponential Fourier series of periodic signal x t of t. So here C n is the Fourier series coefficients, exponential Fourier series coefficients, and we have formula for that C n. So C n is equal to 1 by t integral minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 or 0 to t over one time period minus of 2 plus of or 0 to t x t of t into e to the power minus j n omega naught t dt. So this is the coefficients for a series coefficients of exponential for a series. Now we are going to apply Fourier transform of this periodic signal. So apply both sides Fourier transform. What we will get? We can see. Apply Fourier transform on both sides. On both sides. So Fourier transform of xt of t is equal to and this summation minus infinite plus infinite and coefficients of cn then Fourier transform of e power jn omega naught t okay Fourier transform is applicable to this exponential term because summation is summation cn is a coefficients they are separate the remaining e power jn omega naught t Fourier transform so what is the Fourier transform of this that is the question now so already we discussed Fourier transform of e power j omega naught t. This already we know. Fourier transform of e power j omega naught t. What is the Fourier transform of e power j omega naught t? Frequency shifting property 2 pi del of omega minus omega naught. Right or not? How it is? So we know. Fourier transform of Fourier transform of 1 you know what is the Fourier transform of 1 2 pi del of omega 2 pi del of omega now e power j omega naught t means 1 into e power j omega naught t so it will become 2 pi del of omega minus omega naught frequency shifting property right so this is helpful now this is useful now so here we have e power j n omega naught t. So in the place of omega naught we have n omega naught. Right? In the place of omega naught compare we have n omega naught. So what is the answer we get? So Fourier transform of periodic signal x t of omega is equal to summation minus infinite to plus infinite c n. So what we get here x of not x of 2 pi 2 pi okay 2 pi del of 2 pi del of omega minus n omega naught in the place of omega naught we have n omega naught so 2 pi del of omega minus n omega naught right so this is the Fourier transform of periodic signal or periodic function right so this is a Fourier transform of periodic signal so very simple okay let's go to a problem on this find Fourier transform of impulse train so we have series of impulses here we have impulse again impulse they are repeating up to infinity and up to minus infinity so what is the Fourier transform of this impulse train so this is t this signal I am representing as a del t of t del capital T of t so we have impulse at a 0 at capital T, at capital 2T, at minus T and so on. So this is the periodic signal. We want Fourier transform. Very very important. So Fourier transform of impulse train. 
series of impulses or impulse train so how to do how to do first we have to calculate fourier series right then we can apply fourier transform so what we have to calculate fourier series fourier series means fourier series coefficients we need to do so that i am doing fourier series coefficients let's take the signal minus tau t by 2 to plus t by 2 right the time period is t so after taking time period angular frequency omega naught is equal to 2 pi by t is equal to 2 pi by t i am going to do exponential fourier series for the given signal so what is the exponential fourier series del t of t is equal to so summation n is minus infinite to plus infinite cn e to the power jn omega naught t cn e to the power jn omega naught t so cn we are going to do cn is 1 by t and integral minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 and del t of t del t of t is the given periodic signal e to the power minus jn omega naught t dt just integration is cn so this integration we are going to perform now so cn is equal to 1 by t time period is t and limits minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 so over limits minus t by 2 plus t by 2 we have only one impulse that is at 0 ok so del t of t will become del of t we have impulse at t is equal to 0 between minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 this is the impulse we have so which is at 0 that means del of t so I am taking that del of t e to the power minus j n omega naught t dt so here we have product so already we know signal into del of t x of t into del of t is equal to x of 0 into del of t so here del of t means impulse at t is equal to 0 this we can substitute in the next function or multiplying function then we get the x of 0 into del of t in the same way we proceed now so 1 by t integral minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 so what we get multiplication del of t into e power minus j n omega naught t so impulse at t is equal to 0 del of t means this will be substituted in the uh, exponential then we get del of t into e power minus 0 dt so which will be e power minus 0 is 1 so 1 by t integral minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 del of t dt so this integral represents what this integral represents area under impulse or strength of the impulse area under impulse how much it is 1 so finally we get cn is equal to 1 by t this is a cn now this cn we are going to substitute in the given uh, periodic function representation so what is a fun periodic function representation as per exponential for a series del t of t is equal to summation n is minus infinite to plus infinite cn e to the power j n omega naught t now cn we know what is the cn 1 by t so summation minus infinite plus infinite cn is 1 by t and e to the power j n omega naught t now we are going to apply Fourier transform so apply Fourier transform both sides apply Fourier transform on both sides on both sides then the Fourier transform of del t of t is equal to so summation is as usual summation minus infinite plus infinite and 1 by t also as it is so Fourier transform of e power j n omega naught t e power j n omega naught t so just now we discussed what is the Fourier transform of e power j n omega naught t how it is we know Fourier transform of 1 is 2 pi del omega and Fourier transform of 1 into e power j omega naught t 
So one is multiplied by exponential j omega naught. Then it will become frequency shifting del of omega minus omega naught. Two pi del of omega minus omega naught. So here we have in the place of omega naught n omega naught. So what will be the answer? Summation minus infinite plus infinite one by t. What will be the answer? Two pi del of omega minus n omega naught. So this is the answer. So this two pi we can write outside. Okay. So very simple and easy, right? And uh, we can discuss another problem, just a small problem. Find Fourier transform of find Fourier transform of a given signal x of t is equal to del of t plus one, del of t plus one plus del of t minus one. Very simple. Fourier transform of del of t plus one, del of t minus one. So, which property is helpful to do it? Which property is useful? Time shifting property. So, already we know Fourier transform of del of t one. Fourier transform of del of t is one. Now, Fourier transform of del of t minus t naught. Time shifting property. So, what it will be? One into e to the power minus j omega t naught whatever the time shift that will be in the exponential minus t naught so minus so now fourier transform of x of t apply now fourier transform this is time shifting property time shifting property so properties are very helpful to do analysis fourier transform easily so apply fourier transform both sides then we get the answer on both sides so fourier transform of x of t is equal to fourier transform of del of t plus 1 right plus fourier transform of del of t minus 1 so what is the fourier transform of del of t plus 1 e power j omega t naught what is the t naught here 1 so j omega plus what is the fourier transform of t minus 1 e power minus j omega t naught t naught is 1 here so e power j omega plus e power minus j omega so we can do simplification mathematically uh, what is that simplification is into by 2 so take by 2 And take into multiply by two. So the e power j omega plus e power minus j omega by two is a cos theta. So two cos omega. This is the answer. Two cos omega. Okay. So students, please watch videos regularly. Definitely helpful to you. Watch and practice so that you can understand every. topic easily thank you thank you students